In today's video, I'm going to go through two primary uh, exercises. The first one is to present you with the five Tinkara fishing rods that I've used in the backcountry over the past couple of years and my rationale for choosing each one. And then I'll make some recommendations based on your fishing style, what rod might best fit you. Now, obviously this isn't an exhaustive overview of the Tinkara rod market. There are literally hundreds of different makes and models of Tinkara rods now. And so I'm just gonna give you a little bit of context about what I'm using. The second part of the video, will go through some of the gear that I take on backcountry fishing trips uh, when I'm using a Tinkara rod. So let's start with the rods. The, the five rods I'm gonna present have various handle lengths, collapsed lengths, extended lengths, zoom ranges, weights, and stiffnesses. And all of these things combine to uh, create a character of the rod that uh, gives it gives it its unique flavor. And I'll, I'll tease out that flavor for you and tell you the strengths and weaknesses of each of these rods. I'm going to start out with the rod that I use the most in both the front country and the back country. But admittedly, this is the rod I pick when fishing is difficult. And that rod is this one right here. This is the Tenryu uh, TF39TA. It is an absolute gorgeous rod. And you can see that of the rods I'm presenting today, this is the most compact. It is 14 inches in length. It also has the shortest handle. It's, it only has a 10 inch handle. And the handle is a straight handle. There's no taper in there. And so that means um, you can, you know, move your hand up and down the handle and it is not going to feel any different because there is no taper. It's a straight handle. This rod is unique because unlike most Tinkara rods, which are made of 99 plus percent carbon tubing, this one has fiberglass in the tubing content. And, fiber, and, and I think the fiberglass range in this one is somewhere 15, 20% maybe. And what fiberglass does is make the rod action a little bit softer and allows you to achieve a softer action with a thicker tubing barrel. And that thicker barrel is nice because that provides durability for backpacking. So co very compact rod, nice thick, lower section barrels for durability, which means you can take this rod and shove it in your pack without a case and you don't have to worry about it breaking. And just a really tremendous action, which gives you um, sensitivity to how the rod loads with the line and accuracy if you have the casting skills to take advantage of it. So this is more of a rod geared for experts. And I call this the rod that expert casters use when they go backpacking as opposed to rods that backpackers use when they want to occasionally fly fish and we, we've got choices for that as well this is the tenryu tf39 ta the next rod i want to show you is a pet project of mine this is the tinkara usa hane and this is the backpacking light version that was created several years ago in collaboration with Tinkara USA. This is a, um, a fairly stiff rod. We, we designed this with a couple of, of objectives in mind. We needed a fast action so that um, casting could be quick and snappy. Incidentally, the action that resulted from this rod has made it a very good rod for beginners. Uh, beginning Tenkara fishers tend to cast very rapidly and they're not super patient. And that's actually a good thing for Tenkara casting and the Hane uh, capitalizes on that. So it's actually a pretty forgiving rod. 
We also wanted this rod to have some backbone to tackle big fish because, you know, I, I like to hunt big fish in the backcountry. And so you have good tip flex, but you've got a deep power curve with this rod. So you can actually um, wrangle pretty big fish with the Hane, assuming you have good technique to do that. The other unique feature uh, that the Hane offers is, again, nice, big, carbon, big diameter carbon barrel and a compact link. This one has a handle link that's a little bit shorter than the Tenryu TF39TA. Um, this one is about eight and a half inches. I think the new model Hane that has been released by Tenkara USA has a handle that's a little bit longer and the overall length is a little bit shorter, but the extended length of the new Hane is a little bit longer than this one. And I really wanted to keep this one under 10 feet. This one, this, the old model is nine feet, 10 inches. If you can get your hands on one of these old Hanes, they are a gem. Um, the new Hanes are great as well. They just don't, uh, they're a little bit longer. And so they're not quite as good for compact streams. Okay, so that's the Hane. The next one I will show is the most delicate rod of the bunch and the one that handles big fish uh, the least. And this is the Tenkara USA Roto. Now the Roto is a zoom rod. It has a nine inch handle, so just a little bit longer than the old Hane. It's got a quite a bit longer collapsed length. This one is about 20.5 inches. I don't know what the new model is. Um, this one's a couple of years old. The zoom range on this one is really interesting. It ranges from um, only eight feet, 10 inches long to 10 feet, six inches long. So this is my favorite small stream compact Tenkara rod. Now, I don't think that shorter is better for all Tenkara rods. I think there's a, a lower limit. And for me, that lower limit is about nine feet or so. And you get much shorter than that. And it just becomes a little more difficult to cast and control lines and deliver a delicate presentation because there's just not enough flex in these short rods to do so. So in summary, this is a very lightweight rod. It's the lightest rod of the bunch at just over two ounces. It's a short rod, so it's great for compact streams, and it's a very easy rod to cast. You can see the, the tubing is very thin. So this is a softer action rod and presents really delicate casts of small flies and short level lines. And so this is a great rod for beginners who want to get into level line fishing or who are uh, just in general want a versatile small stream rod that offers some zoom range. Okay, the next rod is the beast of the bunch. This is the Tenkara Ito. This is a big rod. So it has a handle that's almost 12 inches long and an overall length of 25, 26 inches long. It has a double zoom range from 13 feet to 14 feet, seven inches, which makes it the longest rod in this roundup. The interesting thing about the Edo is that it's a soft action and very delicate rod. So you compare the flex of the Edo, you're looking at a 15 penny flex to it. And see the article below the video because it'll explain what what that means, but lower the, uh, the less the number of pennies, the more flex the rod has. Compare that to the Hane, which has a 46 penny flex, the Edo is a really delicate rod. So you've got a delicate action and a long length. This makes it superb for casting level lines, which are very light and require some uh, soft action to cast properly and a long length makes it very ideal for alpine lake fishing. So this is my go-to rod when I am predominantly fishing alpine lakes and I need reach, reach from rod length and reach from handle length. So, you know, you can vary your grip along a Takara rod handle from the top all the way down to the bottom and having a long handle gives you that much additional reach so that you can uh, perhaps reach a rising fish that's farther away than usual. Okay, so that's the Edo. The final rod I want to show is one of the most interesting new rods I've seen come on the market.
This is a brand new rod from Tenkara USA called the Satoki. The Satoki offers a long handle. Again, we're looking at a, a handle that's close to 12 inches in length. This is not a compact rod by any means. This is a little bit more compact than the Edo, but it is still 22 inches or so in length. So it's not going to slide neatly into your tiny pack and you'll probably have to carry it in, a, in an outside side pocket. The most interesting feature of this rod to me is the zoom range. You can go from 10 feet, 10 inches, all the way out to 13 feet, eight inches. So not as long as the Edo, but still short enough to fish a relatively compact stream, a short length of less than 11 feet. This makes the Satoki a really versatile backcountry Tenkara rod. So this very wide zoom range, I would say, is its most unique feature. It has a flex rated at around 28 pennies, and that puts it between the stiffness of the stiffer Hane and the lighter flex or the softer flex of the other rods that I presented here. So that flex, which indicates some depth to the power curve of the rod, uh, means that you can play bigger fish more easily with a rod like this. So if you are um, tackling big fish in the backcountry and you want maximum versatility, I think the Satoki is probably my pick. Um, so this is probably the rod I would take to places like the Bob Marshall Wilderness where you've got big rivers and potentially large bull trout that you could be playing or when you're in a in an area where you're fishing both streams and rivers and alpine lakes so you've got a, this nice wide zoom range to address those three scenarios okay let's talk a little bit about gear at the bare minimum um this little device by tankara usa which is a line keeping device you can you can see that there are two grooves in here where you can store either two Tenkara lines or one Tenkara line and a length of tippet material. And then on the front facing side, you've got actually a minimalist little uh, compartment here that you can store some flies in. And then these two holes are there so that you can slide it onto a fly rod handle for carrying and whatnot. So you can get away with a rod and one of these and have everything you need to fish. This is my recommended kit if you're hiking and want to be a total minimalist and maybe fishing is just an incidental activity that you want to um, participate in on your trek. Some of the essential tools that I bring um, while Tenkara fishing include a set of nippers. These are a very simple and lightweight set. They do include a needle point in one end, and that is to clear head cement from the eyes of flies, um, the eyes of the hooks on flies that um, sometimes get clogged up when they are finished by the fly tire. The second thing I bring is a small pair of hemostats, and uh, that's for pinching down hook barbs, uh, grabbing the hook inside a fish's mouth to release it uh, more cleanly without handling the fish too much. Um, you can use it for pinching, split shot, and things like that if you are a nymph fisherman. I do dry fly fish with Tenkara frequently. I fish a lot of emergers and dries. Most beginning Tenkara anglers will uh, appreciate the ease of casting a braided or furled line. So this is a much easier thing to use as a Tenkara line than a level line. And so you'll find this in the majority of beginning and intermediate Tenkara anglers kits. And really that's the basic kit. So we've got the line keeper, we've got my fishing license, I've got a pair of hemostats, I've got a Tenkara fly line, and a pair of nippers. And so all of those things, when you add it to a two ounce Tenkara rod, way less than five ounces. Now I'll show you a few other things if I'm kitting out for a more um, serious fishing expedition and I want more flexibility. The first thing I will do, of course, is bring more flies. Now it's winter time right now, so my fly box is going to reflect what I'm fishing with right now, which are predominantly 
uh, Czech style nymphs and some small dry flies for the occasional mayfly and midge hatch. I'm gonna bring a really tiny tube of floatant to help keep that fly on top of the water. When you're fixed line nymphing, a level line allows you to um, detect strikes more easily than a braided or furled line. And so I opt for the thinnest, lightest level line I can get, and that's this Neeson uh, 2.5, number 2.5 level line. Above the level line, I'm going to use a siding uh, material, and I use a 0x uh, tricolor cider from Scientific Anglers. So this is a material that has three different colors. So you can see the white green and orange and those colors and the contrast between them allow you to detect strikes more easily when you are nymphing with a tenkara rod. In the backcountry all of these things fit neatly into a small pouch which um, generally goes with me on any deeper backcountry trips. Okay so I'll put my box of flies in there, my tricolor cider, my level line, my fishing license, the nippers go into the little side pouch there, the hemostats go into the front. I'll bring one extra braided line just in case as a backup, got my fly floatant, and then the very last thing which I think is very important for level line fishing is a line straightener and this is basically a um, rubber patch that you pull the line through to straighten it because when it's been stored on a spool it develops memory coils and you want to get rid of those coils before you fish because they'll foul up your presentation and will, will result in a presentation that's not as delicate as it can be. Really important for dry fly fishing. Now these things are heavy because they got this big clip on them so you can you can yank that off and, and uh, not lose any sleep over it. And then they're very light, but they're still like 10 or 12 bucks. So you can achieve this exact same thing by cutting part of an old uh, bike tire inner tube. And so just take a short section of inner tube with you. It's very light, very cheap, and a lot more compact than this big clunky thing. Finally, I'm leaving the, the Tenkara Keeper at home and I'm taking my own spools because I will store several different types of level lines, either uh, lengths or weights, and I might take two or three of these, and these, these only weigh about um, half an ounce or so. And because I'm leaving my Tenkara Keeper at home that has a section of tippet rolled up in it, I'm going to take a dedicated section of fluorocarbon tippet. I use a 5X tippet, typically for most fly fishing. And these fit neatly in here. I've attached a bit of accessory cord so I can wear this around my neck or as a sling pack. So I take something like this, which weighs about six ounces, combine it with a really versatile rod like the Satoki, which weighs three and a half ounces. And for less than 10 ounces, you have an incredibly versatile Tenkara fishing kit that uh, gives you a wide zoom range for all different water types and enough gear to deal with both dry fly and long line, level line fishing, and nymph fishing. Okay, that's it, everybody. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something. Again, this is not a comprehensive presentation of Tinkara gear and tactics. This is just a snapshot in time of where I'm at right now, especially given that the Tinkara Satoki has just been released. And I've got, um, you know, mid December blues here in Colorado, in the high elevations of Colorado. And so I'm uh, dedicated to nymph fishing right now with level lines. All right, happy trails and tight lines, everyone.